What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Steelers Breakdown Podcast. Last one here live from Latrobe. Steelers training camp is officially over, but we do have one more practice before their second preseason game against the Buffalo Bills. We, of course, will be having that joint practice tomorrow down at Akershire Stadium. I will be in attendance, so I'll have everything from down there, which means today I want to kind of take a step back and let's talk about the entirety of training camp. I could talk about today. If you want to focus more on a today-centric kind of view, make sure to check out Steelers Training Camp Rewind. Talked about how Russell Wilson kind of took the QB1 reign today. Um, Zach Frazier got big opportunities because Nate Herbig got hurt and the shakeup in the slot corner room and et cetera, et cetera. So we talked a lot about that. But let's take a look at a broader view of this. I want to talk about winners, losers, guys that kind of stuck out and made a name for themselves. And I, I will talk about some of the guys that are obviously more well-known, but I also want to give enough love to the guys that maybe you haven't heard a lot about um, because those guys certainly are pushing for bottom of the roster spots. And we'll start with guys like Kyron Johnson, um, you know, that outside linebacker four spot. I think him and Jeremiah Moon, to be quite honest with you, can be ha- can be dealt with as winners. Um, I, I think both these guys – had good camps. Johnson is super explosive. He's undersized, but explosive and really bendy. And you can see it in his game. Just go watch the film from the Texans game, and you'll see what I mean. This guy creates pressure. Now, he has to do a better job, in my opinion, of finishing on that pressure, and he's talked about that outside linebackers. Coach Denzel Martin has talked about that with me. But what really comes about with guys like him and Moon is They can win in two ways. Uh, Moon is a little stiffer, but he still has enough bend in his lower half. Johnson plays with great leverage and has this real kind of heavy-handed bull rush that can stun guys. Um, So both these guys stuck out in a big way, and obviously that's going to be decided on special teams, and both of them are quality special teamers, and I think actually have the ability to give you some quality pass rush off the edge which is more than I can say for, you know, what I thought both these guys were going to bring coming into training camp. I think that's important to note. Um, And so you look at at the Steelers right now at that outside linebacker four spot, I think they'll be okay with one of Moon or Johnson. So both those guys are winners. Listen, I think both quarterbacks, in terms of how they perform to camp, have to be labeled as winners. Um, because Justin Fields and Russell Wilson looked good out here. Um, they did. Uh, you know, Justin Fields had a rocky first week, and Russell Wilson obviously missed the first two weeks with that calf injury. Um, but when they were out here, they were matching each other throw for throw. They were throwing all over the field, middle of the field, deep, uh, intermediate, short, out to the sideline, etc. cetera. Uh, they made plays consistently. The deep passing game, the explosive passing game was so notable consistently with this team in training camp. And it was because both these guys have beautiful deep balls that are accurate and make big time plays. And so you really look at the Steelers as it stands right now, and you have to be pretty excited about some of what you saw there um, from these guys. But I also think you also have to put a measured stance on both these guys. Um, both these guys struggle when they're in live pockets. They take bad sacks. We know that. We have seen that on film from both them. For Russell Wilson, we've seen that for 10 years. For Justin Fields, we've seen it for three. Um, so it naturally happens with both these guys. And so I want to see them in preseason games. I think you can definitely weigh the in-stadium, as Mike Tomlin would say, uh, a lot more than you can weigh right now what I'm seeing uh, in training camp. But for what I saw in training camp, I think they're winners. Um, so I think you have to give that to both them. I think Russell Wilson has the edge in that competition right now and will be the QB one as of right now, if I were to say in Atlanta in week one, another big winner, George Pickens. Um, I, I just I mean, this guy won consistently at all levels of the field, um, one off play action. So made tough grabs has the same body control, great hands, consistent 
I mean, this guy, it proves he's an alien day in and day out. Uh, and so I really look at a guy like George Pickens, and he is your Alpha X. He can be your Alpha X. Um, there is no question that he can be that for you. And so I look at him, and I think he's ready for the challenge. I think his route running has improved um, in terms of his intermediate routes specifically. And I really look at him and say, man, you have to be excited about the trajectory of George Pickens. I, I think you know the questions surrounding George Pickens, you know, the effort, et cetera, et cetera. He played extremely well at camp. He looks great. I think he's ready to be a wide receiver one. Likewise, I think Van Jefferson is a huge winner from this wide receiver. It's hard not for him to be. Uh, he surprised me. I'm going to be real. You know, I thought Calvin Austin third was going to be the clear two. Um, and he had a good camp too. I think you could name Calvin Austin the third a winner um, from the this camp. Um, but I, I just think Van Jefferson from wire to wire, from day one to day 16, was so strikingly consistent. You know, the hard work he puts into every practice, the 300 balls he catches every day. Um, you saw his hands improve. He caught everything. Um, and that has been historically been a big problem for Van Jefferson, has been the consistency just with his hands um, and how well he catches the ball out of his frame. And so, man, impressive stuff, honestly, from Van Jefferson throughout this camp. I think he's a solid route runner. I don't think he's wide receiver two material. Again, I've talked about that. I still think they need another guy. I, I think the same thing with Calvin Austin, but I think these guys are solid wide receiver three, wide receiver four material. When you think of what they bring to the tape, you know, you, you think of, for example, what Van Jefferson could do and can play outside and can he hold up in the run game and block and he'll definitely try, um, but he can make the catches and, he can do all of that. Um, and so you really look at uh, Van Jefferson, big time win. I s very much believe as well that you can see someone like Calvin Austin being Arthur Smith's Khalif Raymond in this offense. You know, maybe not a guy that gets 10 targets per game, but he can get four deep targets that he could hit on a few of those. So he'll have a high yards per catch, um, a high efficiency. Um, and so that is really something that I look at when we're talking about a guy like uh, Calvin Austin. So I, I think those guys are winners uh, as well. And, and then you kind of get to the nitty gritty here. You know, I think it's harder to kind of quantify rookies. I think, for example, Zach Frazier had a great end to training camp. What say he had a great start? Is he a winner? And, eh. um, you know, in limited reps, I think you could point to Corey Trice definitely being a winner. Um, that is a guy that has stepped up just about every step of the way. When they gave him first team reps, this training camp, he took them and ran with them. I think that has a lot of praise to, to go with it. I think he is locking up that corner three role. Um, and similarly, I, I think you can point to guys like Beanie Bishop and, and Ryan Watts and guys, you know, that started out getting a lot of playing time early on. Like Ryan Watts is a starting dimebacker before Trice fully came back, but he, he maintained his level of play. He continued to impress. Beanie Bishop, despite, you know, Graylon Arnold getting first team reps this week, has continued to play really well. Um, I think those three guys are kind of in a bucket together of these guys are winners because they're young players that you have things invested in and you want to continue to see uh, take those steps. And I think a lot of them have taken those steps. So, I think they are winners. Um, and, and then you kind of look at, you know, on the flip side of things, um, and, and I, I want to discuss kind of losers. Um, you know, there are other winners on the defensive line, guys like DeMarvin Liao and I think Dante Jackson. I think Peyton Wilson had a good camp. Um, there's a lot of guys that had good camps. But but I kind of want to talk about a few concerns because, right, it, it's hard to paint a perfect picture because right now everybody's undefeated. Um, it feels like everything's going well for all 32 teams. Everybody's on the upswing. Everybody's impressive. So when I espouse praise on all those players, you're like, well, they're going to the Super Bowl, right? Um, so here's a few points of concern that I would have. We already kind of mentioned one of them. Um, wide receiver. 
I just think wide receiver remains an issue. Um, I look at this team and they, I think they have fine wide receiver depth, like wide receiver threes. Um, I think they're going to be fine. If, for example, they did trade for Brandon Ayuk, I think this is a very good receiving core. If you had Roman Wilson there as well, but Roman Wilson started out really well in training camp. It seemed like the wheels were starting to really click and then he gets hurt. So how much can you expect out of him? I just think they need another guy. If it's, even if it's not Brandon Ayuk, um, I, I think they need to explore the market, you know, cut down day. Who's going to be out there? Can they get John Mechie? Can they get Robert Woods? Can they get someone into that room? I, I think that's something. Because I, I did see at times where there were issues with separation, uh, issues with consistency in that room. And so you want to have dependability for these quarterbacks. Uh, so you definitely want to look in that. I think I'm a little bit concerned about the corner depth itself. I like Corey Trice, and I again, I think he's done well. I think outside of that, though, you know, I don't think Darius Rush had the best camp. Anthony Averett had a really nice week, and then it's kind of tapered off. Same thing with Thomas Graham. I, I think the safety room has looked good, but that corner room has struggled um, at times. And so I'm a little worried about the depth if Joey Porter Jr. or Dante Jackson gets hurt. Um, I think Corey Trice can handle a lot of it. I'm just not sure they have great depth at corn. Um, so I think that's a concern. Um, I also think you look at the offensive line, not necessarily in terms of performance, um, at least fully. I, I think Broderick Jones didn't have a great camp. Um, and, and where I kind of come from that is, you know, he's been wearing this big brace on his left arm and you can kind of see it compromising him. Again, we don't know what that injury is, but I'm wondering if at some point it would help Broderick take a few days off, let that heal. Because you even go back and watch the Texans game. It doesn't feel like the strength is fully there. It doesn't feel like the guy we saw last year where he's moving people and and, and getting things out of the way. And, and he trusts both his hands with his technique and doesn't feel like that guy's there. I don't see it in practice. I didn't see it in the Texans game. So, First of all, is that going to be an issue? Second, why is he not playing more left tackle? Dan Moore struggled this camp. Um, and I just think guys like Falotanu and Frazier and McCormick had solid camps. I just think they're young. And young offensive linemen are notorious for having kind of learning curves in the NFL. So it's naturally going to happen. So I, I think you look at that and you naturally think, oh, okay, you know, there's going to be a learning curve for these guys. Uh, and, and I think – that's natural with offensive linemen, especially early in their football careers. So I don't really think it's it's a huge issue to worry about, but it's definitely wor worrisome in the early portions of the season because I think you're going to see these guys uh, start pretty early. And so I, I think those are just a few concerns. Again, quarterback isn't really a concern for me from what I saw on the practice field, but from what I know on tape, I think that's another thing to be very highly skeptical of. I think Arthur Smith, how he kind of meshes the philosophy of what he does is also somewhat of a concern, not from camp, but just from common knowledge and, and what we didn't see uh, at camp. So I think there's a few things to kind of sprinkle in there um, as concerns as well as the winners we saw. Um, but training camp's over. It was great uh, to be out here in the trip again. It's my fourth season. I love it uh, out here. It's one of my favorite times of year because you get to know everybody, you get to know a new team. It's great getting to know a new team out here in training camp. And we'll be back uh, on the south side shortly. So we'll be back tomorrow for that joint practice. I'll obviously have a recap of that. We'll be back talking about it, what happened, what we learned from it. And ahead, of course, to Saturday's preseason game between the Steelers and the Bills. Folks, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. And of course, thank you all for watching. Be back next time.